Okay, so this is a bunch of problems, and the Vesper theory is a balance shell electron pair repulsion. So they want to stay away from it as much as they can, and lone pairs are bulkier, so they want to stay even the penalties more for the repulsion. And they said, well, can you draw the Lewis structures? And the following that, and then can you uh, draw what kind of shape of the molecule it should be, and how, how's that the electron geometries, and Okay. and then the shape of a molecule. And the first one is, is actually the most challenging one. Okay? Uh, the, the rest of it is actually very easy. So I will, I will spend more time in trying to spend and get this one. <coughs> so this one, chlorine is, what's the number for chlorine we use? Chlorine is seven, right? And oxygen is six. And then, oh, you got you got negative here. So you got one more electron, right? Okay. So then, then make it uh, 18. So that's a 26. So I got 26 electron. And then what do you do is we like we do it normally usual. Let's 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 forget about the shape for now. Just think about the connectivity. So I'll put the core in the middle, and three oxygens like this way. And then, okay, so then, then I need to make a bond, right? So making a bond, one, two, three bonds. So that means I use six electrons, I left with 20 electrons there, and then let's use the next one. And then you just do the in and out, right? This is a one, two, three, six, 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 six. At least the oxygen line, you satisfy the octet rule, and then you use three times six is 18. So you're left with two electrons now, and then the finally was given to the chlorine in the center. That's so far so good. And then what do you do is, okay, uh, I know the former charges here is a minus, 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 you guys remember that? And so what's the former charges in the chlorine in the middle? instead of using the, the formula that you guys know, which is seven minus two minus three. Can you see that? There are minus three, and so therefore, this is over a minus one, so this must be plus two, okay? So that's, that's just a easier, easier kind of shortcut way to, to know. And once you got that one done, we, I have an easy fix of the, high former charge, which is a high delocalization of the charges, right? Can I share and make a double bond? This one goes away. The former charges of double bond with two pairs of lone pairs is zero. And then, and then this one becomes zero, this becomes plus one. And I can choose another one to do the same. So my natural choice for here is going to be Double bond with chlorine, double bond with, op, uh, with oxygen. This one is there. Uh, you only have a two lone pairs, no formal charges, and oxygen is there. So, this is a probably what we covered like two weeks ago or before your first exam. That's a Lewis structure, and you're okay. okay? Now we are demanding more. We are demanding more. Can you draw the three-dimensional shape of this molecule? And let's count the, how many electron group they have. And then I'm going to use the, this orange one. So I'm going to count one, two, three, four. So you got four EGs, okay? Whether it's a single bond, a double bond, bond count as a one stick. And the lone pair is a kind of floppy ball, but found as a one electron group. So when you have a whole electron group, what kind of electron group arrangement do you guys being told to do? That's right. That's right. So that's the electron group arrangement. And as far as a molecular shape, this is not being counted. Only the connection between atom, which is a, you only count the bond, right? So I will draw the tetrahedral one more time, which is uh, it looks like a looks like a pyramid, but everything is a triangle. 
faces. So those are the four faces object in the three dimension. And then what's going to happen for this molecule is uh, you are going to have chlorine in the middle and you will have a double bond, single bond, double bond with an oxygen, oxygen, oxygen with a negative charge. I just you know um, didn't show all the dots, but that's the arrangement. And uh, the most important dot, which is this dot, is going to locate themselves here as a kind of floppy big electron. Okay. So as far as the, their shapes of a molecule is concerned, it looks like a little crush the, the pyramid with a trigonal plane at the bottom. So that's a trigonal pyramidal structures, and that's what it is. And I think that this is the, the Alex used the one. I, I used to make this diagram before. Uh, I, I just realized this is a six, it's supposed to sue. But this is a formal answer so that you can also go and look at that. This is a chloride ion that is actually, you know the Clorox, the bleaching thing, and this is all using this. And as you, as you see that, the tetrahedral, they use this notation of the line or a wedge, which is, which is a solid wedge or a dotted wedge. Dotted wedge is something that's moving away from the plane, and the wedge, solid edge, is something that's sticking out of the plane, and the line is itself is an inline. And do you know what this is? This is methane, right? Methane, people do the three-dimensional representation of methane, drawing two lines on, on the plane, in the plane, on the plane, and then the, this one is moving away, fading away, and this is sticking out of the plane. That's how they do, and I can, I can do that. So once again, uh, geometry of electron group is tetrahedral, but shape itself is trigonal pyramidal structures. That's uh, uh, probably the most uh, evolving one. So second problem now I'm going to go, uh, which is uh, this one, PF3. Okay, so this one is now, the attachment is very easy because of the, you are dealing with a halogen. Halogen is only asking for one more electron, I will be happy and I, will, I don't want to bother you at the central atoms. That's what they're asking. So if you're looking at the P, P is a phosphorus and you have, I think that you have a five. Right? So you have five. And then you have a 3F, so you are going to make, you are going to distribute it three electrons to make three bonds. With fluorine. Does it make sense? Because this is what they're going to do is, fluorine is having a, actually, seven electrons and then they're asking from the your your center central atom which is a phosphorus and then they, they just ask so they just each, each asking for one electron so you are going to have essentially they are going to have these three bonds consuming three <laughs> electrons and then five minus three is two and that means one lone pairs so then now you're going to count EG, which is a one, that's a three, that makes it four EG. Okay. Four EG means tetrahedral, and this is the same thing as, as the one, your P is in the middle, like this, but that's a tetrahedral, and then F is like that, and so therefore you are, trigonal pyramidal structures. So the people drive, uh, draw, drive, uh, draw this way, but uh, geometry is trigonal pyramidal structures, and the tetrahedral is their electron group geometry. And what about the, the hybridization of this? This is a four, right? Four means always sp3. Five, four means sp3, five means sp3d, and so So make sure that uh, you, you are really looking at geometry of the molecule, which is a molecular shape, and geometry electron pairs, or electron groups. Uh, uh, you, you keep attracting uh, different kinds of. 
This is also easy. Uh, if you look at an oxygen, oxygen means six. Okay, I'm going to use two electrons to make two bonds. There are two of them. And then you got four electrons left over. Now we're going to pair them up. Two lone pairs. So therefore, how many EGs I'm talking about? Number four, right? So same, same deal here. It's a, it is a tetrahedral. And so, but now, having said that, oxygen will tetrahedral, so I'm going to do the tetrahedral arrangement like this. And then I'm going to pick anything, so let me pick here as a fluorine. Obviously, this one needs a satisfied octal group. And these are the location where you are going to put two lone pairs here. So therefore, this is a tetrahedral electron group, but shape-wise, this is a, what do you call? Bent. Bent. Somebody says V-shape. Either one, both are working. And you, you know this one from your, I guess, of high school chemistry. H2O, right? H2O works in the same way. They got like this, right? So H2O is a bent molecule, and because of that, actually, it has an interesting property of the ice being lighter. So when you pour ice onto the water, the ice float, and that's an unusual property because of the water is a bent molecule, and the solid actually expands the volume, which is unlike to happen for other kinds of salt molecules. Okay, let's continue to do this. Xenon, so xenon to me, what's the number? Eight, right? That's the electron at the center, and I'm going to use four electrons to make four bonds. And then how many I have left with? Four electrons, I'm going to pair them up, two long pairs, so that means I got two lone pairs. Okay. So four plus two is six. Six means, you know, what, what's the six is an easy arrangement? Hmm? This all cover, right? Octahedral, heard, heard about that? Yeah. The symbol for octahedral is this, OH. And the way that I draw the octahedral is, I'm gonna draw the plane, square plane, draw something up and down. And so that, that makes it, if you're looking at the top, I'm gonna to color in a more, in a pink way. This is a pyramid of, right? The pyramid that you can see in the Egypt with a square base, the pyramid. And then there is another, uh, like upside down pyramid, which is like this. Can you guys see that, right? This is like a two pyramid upside down. And if you count the number of facets, right? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four is an eight facet. And that's a really nice. And actually among all this, octahedral is my favorite because if you think about, I have this square plane and the things are up and down, right? And if I have this octahedral, if I rotate that, it is, you can make another square plane with the axial position rotating. This is a very symmetric molecule. Uh, it doesn't matter whether you put something on the top or on the bottom, everything is connected in the same way. So it's a very symmetric. Uh, just like the tetrahedral and the octahedral, they are the, sort of the cousins of each other. Very symmetric arrangement. Okay, so then the, you're going to put this, uh, the oxygen, and then where do I put? It doesn't matter where you're putting the first long pair. And the most people just, I think it's just an aesthetic reason that I don't want to put it in the side. They just put it either up or down. And the usual choice is first one you put it up. That's, a, that's it doesn't matter where you put because I can rotate this one to be the same position as they are. But that's the first long pair to be, to be done. And once you put this long pair there, the next one should, that choice is actually limited. 
you cannot put it on this side because of pre-existing long pairs. You have to stay far away from each other, so that's not. Okay. So I can, I think that's the that's arrangement. So therefore, what, what is this? Uh, this is a xenon with uh, four fluorines, so the fluorine in the four corners. <coughs> So as a practice, uh, well, you told me that it doesn't matter you put it in here. So I can put it here, okay? Nobody, not many people do it this way, but by nature that you have to put in the, uh, the opposite side, right? And if you look at that, and I'm going to highlight, you have to finish it up. Xenon, fluorine, fluorine, fluorine. Now start to draw the new square there. Can you guys see the square in that point? And that's the same as the one in, on, the, on the left, right? So it doesn't matter how, how you put it in, it's just uh, the left way is much more conventionally easier to visualize. Like somebody can do this way and it doesn't matter how. So uh, this one is uh, octahedral electron group geometry, and this is now square planner as a shape. And octahedral means six. And six means SPPP, right? SP3, four, four. So that's the, that makes it six, right? And we write it as SP3, D2. So that's a hybridization for number six. So it's just a hybridization wise, two is sp, three is sp2, four is sp3, five is sp3d, six is sp3d2. And that's a, just a translation. You start with the s and the p, and when you use up, you move on to the 